Spotify is making changes to its royalty model by the end of this year, and it's said that it's going to generate an extra $1 billion for working artists within the next five years. And that's amazing, right? Right? Well, that depends. That depends if A, you fit into their version of what a working artist is and where that money is going to come from. So let's look at Spotify's imminent plan and how this could affect you. If you're new around here, my name is Damien Keyes and I own DK MBA, DK Music Business Academy, which helps artists like you build a fan base around your music. Spotify plan on implementing changes to how and when artists get paid their royalties. They are looking to remove royalties for any artist that they see as undeserving in order to give those royalties to artists that they see as legitimate artists. Now, to do this, Spotify plan on implementing three major new policies, with the first one being a new minimum length for noise tracks. Right now, Spotify royalties kick in when a track has been listened to for over 30 seconds. The problem with this is it allows people to game the system. Take this as an example. Imagine if you made music for dogs with anxiety. I know it sounds crazy, but this is a huge genre. And when owners go out and they worry about their pet, being indoors on their own with anxiety so they put on a playlist to keep them company now that playlist might be an hour or two hours worth of your finest dog anxiety music now the problem for spotify as this has no lyrics is instead of me uploading this as one one hour track i am more likely to cut this down into 31 seconds leaving me with 116 tracks so instead of the royalty being a third of a cent for one track, I'm probably going to get 30 cents. Now, it doesn't sound a lot, but imagine that multiplied by all of the music and all of the royalties across Spotify. Now, to be fair, I understand this policy change. This is incentivizing artists and musicians to create music and gamify the system in order to make as much money as possible. However, this second policy might be slightly more contentious for independent artists. Spotify plan on implementing a minimum annual stream threshold before generating royalties. Now, for anyone who's been on YouTube for a while, this happened in January 2018, where all of the royalties that were paid for anyone making content on YouTube were stopped and there was a gatekeeper. There was a barrier to entry. And that was, if you want to make money from YouTube content, then within one year, you have to have a thousand subscribers and you have to hit the 4,000 hours of watch time. So what Spotify is saying is not everybody will get royalties for their music and you have to hit a certain threshold before those royalties kick in. Now, here's the issue. No one knows exactly what that barrier to entry will be. I've heard it everything from 200 spins on a track right the way through to 1,000 spins on a track and possibly even more. Now, you can imagine how many tracks have been uploaded to Spotify that are getting streams but still haven't hit that magic 1,000 number. Music Business news estimate that this could take away 40 million dollars worth of revenue and royalties from independent artists. There are 3 million tracks uploaded to Spotify every single month. That's a lot of micro royalties. But think about it. When someone is listening to a track, they can't listen to another track. So technically, this shouldn't make any difference to how the royalties are calculated, apart from the fact that the majors are getting a different type of deal to you, the independent artist. You would think that no matter how many tracks get uploaded to Spotify, it shouldn't really affect the numbers because whoever's getting their track listened to should still get the 0.03 of a, of a pence. But it doesn't quite work like that because Spotify has different math, not only territorial, but also because of the way the major labels have done their deals. Now, this doesn't just impact independent artists. This massively impacts the aggregators like DistroKid, TuneCore, CD Baby, who are uploading your music to Spotify. Because whenever there's a withdrawal, there is a small withdrawal charge. And of course, taking away hundreds of thousands, if not millions of monthly withdrawals will affect the admin fees that these huge companies are getting. 
Now, even if the royalty is only three or four dollars, it's the charges that will be taken away from these aggregators. And not only that, but there are plenty of artists who don't claim their royalties. And after a certain period of time, if those royalties get left unclaimed, then the distributor or the aggregator will potentially take those back and use those to build the company. Now, everything we are talking about here is tiny fractions. The problem is when you're talking about $8 billion, tiny fractions of $8 billion is still a hell of a lot of money. Now, the third Spotify policy is fines for label that are promoting fraudulently, which I am all for. We are living in a time where labels are spending a lot of money on getting attention. The last thing that we need is for them to rig the game by cheating the system as well. And this isn't just labels and it isn't major or independents. This should go for artists as well. Anybody who is deemed to be cheating the system just because they have their own ego and they can't be seen to have not enough numbers should be penalized and Spotify is not only going to withdraw those tracks but it says there will be hefty fines as well. Now not only does this help to level the playing field but also it stops independent artists from doing stupid things. Only this week I had an independent artist that I work with quote me $22,500 for a three month campaign that when I looked into was complete and utter bollocks. It was completely fraudulent and it was just done out of desperation and desperately trying to get numbers on Spotify. Why? What are we doing that for? We are doing it for our own ego. If we are trying to build numbers, we should be building fan base numbers, people who genuinely care. Now, Spotify is implementing these three policies off the back of a profitable quarter. Yes, the first time in a billion years for Spotify, they've actually made some money. They made $68 million in the last quarter. And a big part of that is because they have raised the amount that the subscription costs in many parts of the world. The Spotify subscription was $9.99. It is now $10.99, which is $10.99 dollars or 10.99 pounds. Also, I found out because of the, the way the world works with how much money it costs for Spotify, the cheapest uh, territory in the entire world for Spotify is Pakistan, where you will pay around about one US dollar for your monthly subscription. Most expensive is Denmark, which makes sense because Daniel X from Sweden, so he probably hates the neighbors. UK comes in second from last at around about $15, with Denmark being about $16 for Spotify. Now, the message that came out of Spotify headquarters is, we pushed the price up, no one seemed to mind, so we might do it again. So be prepared for your Spotify subscription to go up a little bit more. But does that mean you will get extra money? No, probably not, especially with these new policies. It sounds like the rich are going to get richer. The major labels will definitely get a bigger slice of pie. Probably some of the bigger independent labels will also get a slice of the pie. But you, the independent artist, well, it sounds like you have to work even harder for the small all amounts of money that you're going to get. Now, whilst I say that, I can see what Spotify is trying to do here. It is trying to promote quality over quantity. We've got a hundred thousand tracks going onto Spotify every single day. That's a lot of tracks. And it's saying, hang on, do we need all of this music or shall we try and get the best of the best? If you are just putting music out for the sake of it and it's not really doing anything, should you get royalties? And I guess that's a question that I would ask you. Should you get royalties or should you have have to hit some kind of barrier if your music is good enough for you to be able to hit that royalty rate. So while Spotify is trying to promote quality over quantity and also stop people from gaming the system, not only from putting up 31 seconds of tracks because it's not art just for the money, but also to stop these botted playlists with the emergence of AI, this is happening more and more. The problem I and probably you have with this is in trying to do the right thing, there are independent artists who are going to get caught up in the crossfire. They are going to get the kick in the nuts while Spotify is technically trying to do the right thing. Now, when I normally make a video like this, I will get comments down below saying 0% of nothing is still nothing and that isn't going to change my one cent or five cents. But I think this goes past just the financial value. To me, when an artist gets a royalty check, no matter how small, this is one step up the ladder. This makes you feel like you've achieved something. 
This makes you feel that there are people listening to your music and paying attention. And that gives you the impetus to go back in the studio, to write more songs, to go out and do those gigs, to do that promotion. So to me, this isn't about making the extra three, four, five dollars. This is a matter of pride. It's a matter of doing something that makes you want to carry on. And that to me is very, very important for independent artists. Without progression comes anxiety and a feeling of failure. And I don't want that for up and coming artists. After all, you might release three, four, five singles, four albums, 20 albums, and all of a sudden you might have practiced enough to really figure out this game. And I want to make sure that even if you're producing stuff which isn't good now, that doesn't necessarily mean you should stop because there could be something amazing in you for the future. So what are your thoughts? Do you think Spotify should be getting rid of more of the hobbyists, going for quality instead of quantity, and prioritizing the working artists? I'm not sure where the, the working artists kicked in, but I guess a thousand streams on a song sounds like what they're talking about. Or do you think that $40 million per year is actually a drop in the ocean compared to the eight, nine, or 10 billion that they make? And it's a small price to pay to keep artists on the path of progression and feeling like they are achieving so that they carry on making music into the future. Let me know in the comments below. I have a feeling this one's going to get a little bit juicy. Thanks for sticking with me when I'm obviously feeling a little bit under the weather. But uh, I'll see you guys next week.